you to get home and make your preparations. Now, I'm doing that to be nice just in case you all want to invite me if you made ribs. If you made ribs, if you think about me. Amen. Let us go down in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your blessings. We give your name, honor, praise, and glory for yes, all you have done and who you are. Yes, Father. We ask, O oh Father, as Pastor Hager proclaimed in his prayer, that you would send the true speaker. For if the true speaker does not come, James J. Bolton will have to take his seat. It's in Jesus' name we pray with our sins to give we ask. Amen. 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 Will you stand with me and go to God's word in the book of Isaiah? The book of Isaiah. Thank you so much, choir, for that wonderful selection and for Pastor Hager for reading the responsive reading. And I doubt that he knew what I would be preaching about this morning with the help of the Lord. That responsive reading goes right to where we'll be. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. And when you have found Isaiah chapter 26, we're only going to read for the sake of brevity verse number 6. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 26. Or let's just read verse number 3. Verse number 3. Yeah. I hope you have your highlighter and your pen because I want you to highlight a few of these words. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, but I'll also be referencing the Message Bible and the New International Version. If you are there, say amen. Amen. And let's read slowly. The first word says, thou. I want you to underline that. Thou will keep him in what kind of peace? Perfect. Perfect, perfect peace. Underline perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed. Underline or highlight the word stayed. Whose mind is stayed on who? On the. Thee. Underline the word the. Because he trusteth in the. Underline the word the. Yeah. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, mm -hmm. whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. For the time that we share, I want to lift this subject. You held me together. Amen. Amen. You held me together. You may be seated in the presence of God. And sometimes I will say you, sometimes I will say we, sometimes I will say us. But the truth of the matter is, God held us together. Amen. Dear hearts, people are hurting and people are searching. In fact, since 2011, exorcism, voodoo, witchcraft, all of these have increased by 500%. Because people are hurting and people are searching. Pastor Hagen, in 2021, the third most popular vault item was alcohol. Amen. It was only behind streaming videos and groceries. The average person that bought alcohol, the study says, said they bought it for a reason outside of recreation. Because 14.5 million Americans after the age of 12, for nearly 15 million Americans have what is known as AUD. Alcohol use disorder. And these individuals said that they bought the alcohol not to have fun, but to get rid of the hurt, to mask the pain, and also to keep Sister Vanessa from falling apart. And I encourage you, dear hearts, never forget who you were before you became who you are. Right. Amen. All of Amen. us in here Amen. have some skeletons in our closet. Amen. Amen. 
all of us in here has some BC days, some before Christ days. Mm -hmm. And some of us, our skeletons aren't even skeletons, they're still bodies. So never forget who you were before you became who you are. Because God, dear hearts, has a way of keeping his hands on you. In fact, you don't look like what you've been through because he's always had his hand on you. Amen. And his hands, his hands are sacred hands. Right. His hands right. are strong hands. Yes. His hands are stable hands. Amen. And therefore, since he has those type of hands, it was his hands that kept you and held you together. Amen. Amen. It was his hands. His hands, mighty hands. Yes. His hands, strong hands. His hands, holy hands. Yes. It was his hands that held us together. Now the book of Isaiah, Sister Jones, shows us and tells us how he held us together. The book of Isaiah, who is a, what we call a major prophet. Uh -huh. He was not major because he was a shot caller and a baller. He was major, dear hearts, because of the number of verses or chapters that he had written. Uh -huh. That's what made him a major prophet. You have the minor prophets mm -hmm. who had not written as much as the major prophets. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah tells us how in two ways that God held us together. Yes. One of the first things that he says is that God held us together is because he knows us yeah. Yeah. and he knows what we stand in need of. Uh -huh. Now this prophet Isaiah was the prophet that Jesus quoted and spoke the most of uh -huh. because he was known as the eagle eye prophet. The eagle eye prophet, this guy, Isaiah, was known as the eagle eye prophet because he prophesied things that occurred in the future more than any other prophet. And Isaiah, who prophesied over 2,722 years ago, realized what we will be going through today. Isaiah did this. Isaiah said, Thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Uh -huh. And though this was written over 2,000 years ago, right. we understand that Isaiah knew what he was talking about because he could see into the future. Right. Amen. So prophecy, dear hearts, is really this. It's bringing the future to the right now. Uh -huh. And so what Isaiah said back then still applies to us today. Amen. And Isaiah, dear hearts, lists two things as the reason that God held us together. The first thing he says is the first reason God held us together is because he, number one, he granted us protection. Uh -huh. Did you see it? He did what? He granted us protection. The Amplified Bible says it this way, that God guarded us against us. Uh -huh. Because sometimes God has to save you, not just from your enemies, but God has to save you from you. So he guards us. He won't let other folk harm us. And many times he won't let you harm yourself. So he granted us protection. He is the good shepherd who watches over his sheep. Now, he's just not our guide, but he's also our guard. Uh -huh. right. So he yeah. loves you enough that he will keep you in perfect peace with your mind uh -huh. stayed upon him. So Deuteronomy 24 says it this way, that God is your bodyguard uh -huh. 
And oftentimes he will go before you to fight for you. Amen. A few years ago, I was living in Ithaca and I had to fly to the, uh, Dallas to, con to, to speak for a conference. And there was a lot of big wigs there. Now, if I named their names, I'm sure most of you all would know them. Just big wig preachers. And they were coming in and coming in, getting off of private flights and all of this. And I was on one flight. As they were getting off these flights, you would see them surrounded by several people. But I was in, now I wasn't in first class, I was by the bathroom. <laughs> and when I got off my flight, I had my Bible, I had my book bag, and I had my carry-on. So as I'm getting off the flight, there was a young lady who was standing in the, in the, the, the baggage claim, and she said, she said, are you Dr. Foltz? And I said, yes. She waited, and I said, good to meet you. Well, she's kept standing there. And I said, ma'am, why are you still standing here? She says, I'm waiting for your entourage. <laughs> I said, my who? She said, your posse, your folks, your boys. I said, baby, I don't have a posse, no folks and no boys. I just got the Bible. I got a book. And this book says that God goes before me. Uh -huh. This book says that the blood of Jesus covers me. Uh -huh. This book says that goodness and mercy follows me. So I don't need a bodyguard. Uh -huh. I got a protector in this book. And so he will protect you. He will hold you together by number one, doing what? Granting you protection. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But not only, dear hearts, will he hold you together, or has he held us together by granting you protection, number two, he holds us together, watch this, by gifting us peace. Uh -huh. yeah, he, will. he gives us a gift right. in the form of peace. Right. Now, if you were to look at this text carefully, you will see that our key verse lists the word thee or thou three times. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thee or thou three times. This, dear hearts, is actually the revelation of the triune nature of God. Uh -huh. God is a God who operates in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Now, God the Son, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he is the Prince of Peace. Uh -huh. Now, peace, dear hearts, is not the absence of noise. Peace is actually the presence of order. That's it. And the Bible says, and you underline it, he says he won't keep you in regular peace, Pastor Hagen. He will keep you in perfect peace. Now, perfect peace, when you look at that in the Hebrew, is shalom, shalom. It's peace, peace. It's not regular peace, it's double peace. Uh -huh. So what the Bible is telling us is he can hold us together with his peace because anytime we see peace, peace in the Hebrew repetition, it means it's stronger than whatever it's facing. So in other words, God has more peace than you have problems. Just like he got more grace than you have sin. He's got more forgiveness than you have mess ups. He has more handkerchief than you have tears. God has more peace than you have anything that's bothering you. So God has given us peace, peace. Not just regular peace, but peace, peace. Uh -huh. Shalom, shalom. And if you think about the corridors of your life and you realize all of the things that you have been through, it was nothing but peace, peace that kept you, you. Right. Peace. Perfect peace. Some people, if they knew your story, they would not even realize how you're still alive. Yeah. And you are here today and looking as well as you look because God granted you right. his peace, peace. Yes. And if you want to know what kept you, it was God's peace, peace. Mm -hmm. When you wanted to throw in a towel, and some of you all did throw it, right. peace, peace threw it back at you right. and said, no, no, hold on, child of God. Yes. Right. I'm yes. giving you yes. peace. Yes. When you wanted to give up, Peace picked you up. Yeah. That's why that word stay that I told you to underline in Hebrew means to prop up something that's ready to fall. Hallelujah. And you wonder why you're still standing when you were ready to fall. It was God's peace, peace. Uh -huh. yes, yes. 
And as long, dear hearts, as long as you have energy, you will have enemies. Amen. But God swore to himself that he would give you peace, peace. So in all things, we understand that many people, dear hearts, they wear the cross, but they don't bear the cross. Mm -hmm. yes. And for those of you who bear the cross, the reason that you can is because God's peace right. is keeping you. Amen. It's that same peace that kept the disciples in Mark chapter 4, verse 39, mm -hmm. when they were on the sea the calamity, the chaos of the sea, and Jesus was asleep. They went down and they said, Jesus, don't you care that we're about to pray? Yes. And he did actually did not speak necessarily to the winds and the waves. He rebuked the winds, but he spoke to peace. Uh -huh. Read it carefully. He said, peace is a lot of chaos around here, so peace, you need to be still. Amen. And when he spoke to peace, and peace was still, then everything in the boat and outside of the boat calmed down. Amen. That's why you're able to hold your peace when you know you should have cussed them out. That's why you ain't able to hold your peace when you know they've done you wrong because it's God's peace, not yours. It's the peace, peace that he gave you. So that's why John 1427 says it this way, this way, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Yes. And understand this, dear hearts, when you get peace, you are to give peace and live peace. Yes. So let's I hold you too long. God held us together. Yes. Number one, by what? Granting us protection. Yeah. Number two, by gifting us peace. And since God gave us his protection, since God gave us his peace, we ought to give him our praise. Amen. We ought to give him our praise. A close look at this book, this chapter, is actually a hymn of praise. And praise, dear hearts, is our response to God's goodness. And good, the Bible says, is not just what God does. Good is who God is. Amen. And since God is good, he deserves our praise. Because he kept us safe until we got saved. Yeah. He held us together. He held our feet so we wouldn't stand in the ways of sinners. He held our legs so we would not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He held our hands so we wouldn't touch evil, but we would lift them up to him. He held our ears so we won't hear negativity, but we'll hear his voice. He held our eyes so we won't see our circumstances, but we'll see his goodness. He held our hearts so we could love those who did us wrong. And then he held our brains so we wouldn't think bad thoughts, but we would think of him. So we say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. For that peace, that protection, God, I praise you. Yeah. My time is up. Y'all can go watch the Super Bowl. I'm done. Amen. 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 Amen.